This is lesson 27, and it's about the Pythagorean relationship. And of course, like always, if you've missed or skipped videos, you can click the description and get links to help you out. The Pythagorean theorem states, in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. Oh, what does that mean? Okay, well, the long side is the hypotenuse. That would be this side, okay? And these are the legs, the short sides. And it's saying in a right triangle, see how we have our box? We know it's a right triangle. It's saying the square of this hypotenuse, so if we did 5 squared, it would equal the sum of the lengths of the legs, the squares of the lengths of the legs. So if we did 3 squared plus 4 squared, it would equal 5 squared, see? So just like here, we would do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we would do 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 4 times 4, which is 16, will equal 5 times 5, which is 25. So yeah, it works. And the longest side, this hypotenuse, the longest side is opposite the right angle. See how it's across from it? It's opposite. And this long side will always be the hypotenuse. It'll be that c squared in the formula. And we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing length in a right triangle. Use side lengths to see if a triangle is a right triangle. Or we can use it to find the distance between two points on a coordinate graph, on a coordinate plane. And the Pythagorean formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, can help us find unknown side lengths in a right triangle, in right triangles, in real world problems in two and three dimensions. So, if you take a look, here we've got our 90 degree angle. We've got a leg here, a leg here, and then the hypotenuse. And we have A, B, and C. And it doesn't have to face this direction. It could face the other direction. We have A, B, and C as the hypotenuse. See that? It could even be crooked. It can even be like this. All right? So this is just basically what it looks like. And the lengths, 3, 4, and 5, like we had in this one, will always make a right triangle, but a right triangle won't always have those lengths. So 3 and 4 and 5 are special to the Pythagorean theorem. And multiples of 3, 4, and 5 will also make right triangles. So if we have 3, 4, and 5 and we multiply it by 1, that gives us the 3, and then we square it, plus the 4, and we square it, plus the 5, and we square it. So we could also do 3 times 2, 4 times 2, and 5 times 2, which will give us 6, 8, and 10. 6 times 6 is 36. 8 times 8 is 64. 10 times 10 is 100. And 36 plus 64 does equal 100. We could also take the 3, 4, and 5 and multiply them by 3 to get a 9, a 12, and a 15. And if we square those, 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. We'll get 9 times 9, which is 81 plus 12 times 12, which is 144, and it'll equal 15 times 15, which is 225. We can even do the multiples as 3, 4, and 5 times a half. 3 times a half is 1.5. 4 times a half would be 2, and 5 times a half would be 2.5. It's just cutting them in half. So we'd have 1.5 times 1.5, which equals 2.25, and 2 times 2 is 4, and it'll equal 2.5 times 2.5, which is 6.25. We add these two together, and yeah, it does equal 6.25. We could even use a fourth or an eighth times these three numbers. Okay? So look for multiples of 3, 4, and 5 if you're trying to identify right triangles. And if they are multiples of 3, 4, and 5, then you know, yeah, it's a right triangle. Okay? And take a look at this one. We've got the side length for B, and we've got the hypotenuse C, but we don't have A. So we know A squared plus B squared equals C squared, so we've got A squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. 6 times 6 is 36. 10 times 10 is 100. We add a negative 36 to both sides of the equation. Here comes our algebra. We create a zero pair, and we get A squared equals 64. We can remove this little two exponent by putting a radical sign around that 64 and finding its square root. What number can be multiplied to itself to make a 64? An 8. So we know the side length for A 
is 8. And since this is in inches, we know it's 8 inches, don't we? Here we've got a side length of 50 feet and another one of 75 feet, and now the hypotenuse is missing. We do 50 times 50, which is 2,500, plus 75 times 75, which is 5,625, and that'll equal the hypotenuse squared. So remember, because these are square, the C's got to be squared, okay? To remove that little two exponent, we put the radical sign around the 8,125, and we find a number that, when multiplied to itself, will equal this, and we get this nice long decimal number. This is about a clo as close as we're going to get. So we have 90.13. We can also say 90.14 if we round it up, right? So squares aren't always perfect, but we can round off the decimal when it's really long like that to get it close. We could even just say 90.1 because the 3 tells the 1 to stay the same in rounding, right? We can use the Pythagorean theorem and side lengths to see if a triangle is a right triangle. We talked about this in the grade 8 math 12.2 video. It talks about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem and proving if a triangle is a right triangle. If the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared doesn't work for the given lengths, it doesn't make a true statement, then the triangle is not a right triangle. So if we had a triangle with the sides 3.5, 7, and 9, would that triangle be a right triangle? Well, let's try it. 3.5 squared plus 7 squared equals 9 squared. 3.5 times 3.5 is 12.25. 7 times 7 is 49, and 9 times 9 is 81. We add these two together, and we get a sum of 61.25. Well, that doesn't equal 9 times 9, which is 81, so that's false. So these do not make the sides of a right triangle. We've just proven it, see? Now here we have a wall that's 20 feet tall. We have a ladder that's 24 feet long. But we don't have this right here. How many feet is the bottom of the ladder from the wall? So, again, we can try to find a squared. So a squared plus 20 squared will equal 24 squared. Well, 20 times 20 is 400, and 24 times 24 is 576. We can eliminate this 400 by adding a negative 400 to both sides of the equation, creating a zero pair, and we'll get a squared equals 176. We can remove that little two exponent by putting a radical sign around the 176 and finding its square root. We do it on the calculator, and we get this nice long decimal number, which can be rounded to either 13.3, if we just round it to one place after the decimal, or approximately 13.27 feet, if we do two places. So the bottom of the ladder is about 13.27 feet from the wall. See? Now, you're going to see things like, will these side lengths make a right triangle? And you'll be given three numbers like 12, 16, and 20. So ask yourself, thinking of the 3, 4, 5, 12 is 3 times 4, 16 is 4 times 4, and 20 is 5 times 4. So they all have to be multiplied by the same number. See, 4, 4, 4, the 3, 4, 5. So yeah, that works. How about here? Well, 3 times 6 is 18, 4 times 6 is 24, 5 times 6 is 30. So those would work. They're all being multiplied by 6. See? So that works. So watch these videos if you still need help, okay? But you should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 313. I think I covered everything that you would need to know. And there's these side videos, even these Algebra 1 videos that talk about the Pythagorean theorem and the formula. And this is even going to come up for finding the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. We talked about the distance formula in 22E. There's a link to that one also, okay? So our next video is going to be Recognizing Applications of the Pythagorean Relationship, video 27b. We're going to talk about using the Pythagorean Theorem in real life to solve real-world problems. All right? And of course, there's going to be word problems in there. So make sure you understand this a squared plus b squared equals c squared before you move on. All right? So keep your chin up, keep trying, and I'll see you next video. Bye.